Okay, hi, I'm Bert Kumin from the History Department at the University of Warwick, where I'm Professor of Early Modern European History, which means particularly the period that comes before 1800. And in my own research, I'm interested particularly in where people meet, where they socialized, where they had all forms of exchange. That includes parish churches, village halls, and public houses. So that's one thing that links me to this feast initiative. Hello, and I'm Rosemary Collier. I'm a professor in the School of Life Sciences at Warwick. Um, my area of expertise is insects, and I work on insects, particularly in the context of them being pests of crops, and particularly vegetable crops. Um, so I work with a lot of the people who, who produce vegetables and salads for the UK supermarkets, for example. Well, feast, we want to have feast with a big exclamation mark. The idea is that after this pandemic, where we've had to spend a lot of time in our homes, we want to get people back together. And we thought that one of the most important things in getting people back together is food and drink. So for the um, Coventry City of Culture um, event, we are planning a theme called Feast for the Resonate a Festival that the University of Warwick runs for that occasion. And in this uh, initiative, we want to break down a festive meal into like six different components. For instance, meat, uh, bread, uh, dairy, sweets, and drinks. And for any of these weeks, we'll have a video clip where we feature various um, partners in this whole chain of food consumption, starting with the producers, with the artisans, uh, then going on to the retailers and the restaurateurs, and then bringing them together with the university researchers who work on food and drink. So we take everything from farm to fork, as it were, and for that we're also collaborating with various Coventry institutions such as Destination Coventry, the City of Culture Initiative themselves, and also the Coventry BIT team, which is the Business Investment District. And altogether we hope to create a bit of the buzz to help the hospitality industry and to underline to everybody how big a component food and drink are for celebrating things together. So the University of Warwick has identified um, a number of um, important global priorities or, or research themes. Um, there are 10 of them and one of those is, is food. And the idea of those themes, and we call them GRPs, Global Research Priorities, is to enable us to collaborate across the university. So I'm a biologist, but enables me to work with Nayat, who's in history. We've worked in the past with people in theatre studies, people in English, people in politics, economics. And if you think about it, food in particular is, is an interdisciplinary topic. Um, and yeah, if you think about it, it involves every discipline you can you can think of um, because you can think about it in an artistic way, in a historical way, um, health way, healthy food, um, and obviously food production as well. You know, we're doing a lot of different things. We have a festive market on the piazza at the university. We've got a feast food festival at Berkswell. We've got a Greek and Roman cooking lesson, particularly aimed at children and families. We got um, all sorts of website content, blogs, little secondary videos, little discussions and conversations. So my, my sort of message would really be, you know, cheers, come along and have a good time. And we hope to see you at as many events as possible. It's possible to engage both in person and, and virtually as well. So yeah, just please tune in. Uh, I'm Andre, I am a barista at Esquire's Coffee Coventry. Gut cakes are a product from Coventry. It's uh, part of the city's heritage. Um, they are similar to an Eccles cake uh, that are made of minced meat, and we actually are one of the few places that actually sells them in Coventry. They're quite popular. They are made in Coventry, and the only places that actually sell them are uh, Squires Coffee Coventry, so just here at the Transport Museum, uh, on the Belgrave Theatre, and on the Coventry Sea of Culture uh, shop. The God Cakes are given to uh, godchildren 
on New Year's Eve uh, as a symbol of good luck. And there's actually a similar tradition uh, in Portugal, but it's not during uh, New Year's, it's just a few months before. But uh, it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, I think they represent the Holy Trinity, that's why they are shaped as a triangle. As we are inserted inside the Transport Museum, we're obviously connected directly to like culture and events, and we've got a lot of visitors from uh, other places, of the, uh, areas of the country. So it's always nice to promote something that is made in Coventry by Coventry people. The God Cakes are such a culturally and specific thing from Coventry. It's nice seeing people from Coventry that don't know them actually enjoy them uh, and people from other parts of the country. But yes, I think uh, it's a part of what we are as squires, for example. We just try to bring this sense of community and this heritage is part of that community. They are really sweet. They are similar to mean spies, um, uh, to echo skikes. They are really popular and people usually enjoy them. My name is Daniel Gettings um, and I'm a PhD research student at the University of Warwick um, looking into uh, aspects of food and drink history in uh, early modern Britain. So I was trying to find out about the age of the god cake because it's been very difficult to pin down exactly how old it is. Um, there's a reference to God Kitchells in the Canterbury Tales and in some of the earlier translations that is translated as God Cakes from the Old English. So it was perhaps uh, suggested that they were from the 14th century, which is when that was written. Um, but God Kitchells themselves are a separate pastry that uh, come from East Anglia, which fits more with uh, Chaucer's setting. The God cake of today has almost certainly changed from the God cake of the 14th century. I mean, for one, the mince meat as we know it today is uh, made with uh, dried fruits like raisins. The mince meat of the 14th century would have been beef mince that was spiced with pepper, cinnamon, aromatic and exotic spices um, because these expensive spices complemented expensive meat uh, in festive um, period dishes. That's why mince pies are associated with Christmas. The um, exact nature of its construction has probably changed. There are Victorian recipes that suggest that rather than two triangular pieces of pastry, it's one circular piece that's pulled together into a triangle, um, which then would uh, give you three lines on the top. So it would maybe further enforce uh, the, the trinity. And that's quite similar to a, a Jewish um, pastry, um, so which is, is very old. So uh, the, the exact nature of the uh, god cake of today is, is probably quite different. I think it, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to shout about something like this. Why not? Uh, the, um, it, it's certainly a, an interesting piece of, of British food history. It's a piece that's fairly uh, little is known about. And the more we shout about it and the more we care, the more chance we have of actually learning uh, a bit more about it, its past. Uh, that's how I got into it and then uh, hopefully others can follow and do the same and maybe eventually we'll, we'll, uh, we'll know enough that it will become a, a staple of the, the Christmas period for years to come.